So we're here in Vancouver, British Columbia to check out a joint that opened as a butcher shop in 1957 that had a little lunch counter to the side. Well, years go by, the owner decides to retire, and he shuts the doors. Until a local restaurant owner that was a big fan of the place decides to reopen it. This time, he doesn't just go for a lunch counter. He goes for a joint that's serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and 95% of the food is scratch made. This is the new Save On Meats Diner. Whoa. Wow. Hi, everybody. How we doing so far? Give me something. Give me a little something to work with. I love you, Mark. I love you too. So much you have no idea. Save on Meats is once again Yay. open for business. And the I man behind the iconic eatery, Mark Brand, joins us in studio, and we are pulling a little pork today. We are pulling pork. What what kind of adventure will we go on at noon? <laughs> a pork pulling adventure. Oh, Yummy. fantastic. Okay, and tell us what to do, and okay. then we'll we'll get. This no problem. So while we're talking, I'm just going to get you in there. You can grab the fork. You can just grab a piece with your hands, and let's fill this guy about three quarters full. So much to talk about. He's the owner of Save On Meats and a whole lot more, and also the founder of something new called the Better Life Foundation. How are you, Mark Brand? I couldn't be any better. The king of gas. There we go. Save On Meats is definitely my craziest venture yet. It could change the face of the downtown east side forever, or it could ruin me, probably for good. Developers had this 22,000 square foot relic earmarked for condos, but I didn't want another historic old building destroyed on my watch. So I got a hold of it, and I've been working for over a year to restore it to its original purpose with a butcher shop on one side and a diner on the other. In the middle, we're adding a sandwich window to service the neighborhood. The second floor will house our prep kitchen and full bakery. Third and fourth floors will have offices, a laundry, and artist studios, and one day, on the roof, a real urban farm. This reno should cost us millions, but we don't have millions, so we're doing it for pennies. Am I f nuts? You know, you've been in material creation a long, long time. Al's whole ethos of community first just really struck me. His love for the neighborhood, his love for the business. Like, he knew how important it was to the downtown east side. Because you ain't got no love and you ain't got no soul in your heart. When he was closing the butcher shop, he refused to sell the building to anybody who would develop it. And I said, well, you know what, this is, I'm being romantic right now. I don't have any money. I would do it in a heartbeat if I had something, but I don't. So I went to the banks, asked them for money. They always said no. And I had applied to get additional funding from Van City, but a huge sum of money, half a million dollars. We actually got approved for all of the money. So Save On uh, was a haven for me. So I would come and eat here for three ninety five, dollars and stuff myself and talk to Al Delorier, the former owner. And he was an incredible man. He ran this business from 1957 right up until 2009. His mandate in this area was food security. He didn't have the words for it. And of course now that's the coolest lingo in the world. So people would come in, they'd drop a buck fifty on the counter and say, what can you do? And he'd get them some honey ham and a couple slices of bread and off they would go. So that affected me heavily, that there was somewhere still in the city, because I didn't see that piece of the city at all. I didn't know that that existed until I walked in this building. I saw it as a fast-paced, high finance, what car do you drive, intimidating town. The idea was to continue to make it a community piece, a food security piece, a haven for people in this neighborhood during a time of gentrification. We run a barrier employment program out of here and we started working with people who had all the work ethic and just had barriers to any kind of employment based on addiction and uh, severe mental disorder. And then we launched a charity based off of this business model uh, last Saturday called the Better Life Foundation, which is entire mandate is to feed, train, and employ. We realized that the problems in this neighborhood are so big and they're so intense that I know what part I can do. And my portion is food and training and employment and dignity. So we created this token program, which is hugely controversial, nationally controversial. And you come in here, you go to the diner counter, the butcher counter, the sandwich window, and you buy these tokens. And essentially the size of a toonie, they sit in your pocket. Somebody says, I'm hungry. You say, no problem. Take this and you can go get fed. 
So what people say is, I'm taking the decisions away from the poor, I'm using it for my own personal development, I'm using it for my own soapbox to go and, and do whatever else it may be and leverage it for business. I don't know that that's entirely untrue. I do have my own mandates and things that I want to do and I do want to be loud and boisterous about it and I do want to affect change and I may not be going about it in the most Canadian and conservative of ways. I don't care. I initially thought we might redeem five to eight of these things a day. Right now we're redeeming anywhere this week between 65 and 120 a day. Every day. And now the VPD outreach, the Vancouver Police Department, their outreach department carries them every night. The coastal health nurses that help people who are very close to death or are overdosing, they carry them in their pocket. It's become a part of this neighborhood's fabric. Very unpopular decision, very unpopular press piece. I don't give a shit at all. I know what the end result is going to be in my mind and I'm okay to take some losses with the wins. I think it's great to have this huge blowback into what I do because then I get to see it from other people's eyes who've been down here working for 20, 30 years. So I come flash in, kid with tattoos, slick back hair, I'm gonna do all of this social change and good. I'd be pissed off with me too. The detractors also show me things about myself. They show me flaws in my business. It may be 250 words of vitriol, but 30 of those might be dead on. And they are most of the time like, oh, I didn't really think about that. So I'm reverse engineering a business, I'm allowing people to light me up and burn me in the press or on blogs or whatever that may be to get better at what we do. And I don't take any of it personally because you can't. If you looked up the term social entrepreneur in the dictionary, you'd see a picture of Mark. Hi there. Hey Mark. How you doing? How are you? Nice Pleasure to, to meet you. you. Nice to meet you as well. Welcome to the downtown east side. Can't wait to learn more about uh, Save On. It's uh, got quite a history to it and quite it a story. It does. We've got lots to tell you. Wow, this is fantastic. It's not at all what I expected I was going to see here. It's pristine, it's hip, you can tell it's got all this kind of history to it. The idea behind the building is that it's a melting pot for everybody. All right, but why, why do you do this? You know, you're a businessman, you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to make these tokens and feed people. You don't have to do what you did with the sign. Why do you? I love it. I mean, I truthfully really love our city and our neighborhood, and I think that we can be catalysts for positive change. I know we have been already, and I don't mind fighting the fights is the other part. Like, I think people come and they foray into social entrepreneurship, and it's hard. Uh, most of the time you're funded just enough to fail, et cetera, et cetera, and all the stuff that goes along with that. For us, I'm, I'm born to have these fights and arguments and discourse, and I think if I can do it and sort of forge some more path, then people will come behind and go, I can do this. I do love this neighborhood. I do want to help you. You can't do business in this day and age and be successful unless there's a give back. And it's also cool to be doing it. And people don't talk about that, but it's like, you know, if you want to be in the wallpapers or the monocles or any of this cool press or any of this stuff, it's kind of like an elephant in the room. You have to have societal impact. The solutions that we see in our conventional aren't necessarily a solution at all. Think outside the box. Enrich your neighborhood. Just do the right thing. Thank you.